We've ranked the best striker and winger wonder kids in FM23 in our last two tier list videos and you guys really enjoyed it. So we're back with another one today focusing on the best central midfield wonder kids in FM23, ranking them from don't sign to the best of the best. Go sign them immediately. So let's get right into it. So we've got 20 players here today ranging from three different positions on our wonder kids list on FM Scout. So some defensive midfielders, some central midfielders and and some attacking midfielders. Now, as was the same case with last time, I will put the names of all of these players in order in the description down below in case you don't understand the pronunciation of the name when I say it. So you can just search that name up in Football Manager. And the final thing before we start is if you do enjoy this video, to smash the like button for us to let us know you're still enjoying the tier list videos. The first one did really well. The second one, not so much, but we don't really know if we should continue the series. So if you guys want to see more, let us know and subscribe for more content like this. Comment down below if you think that I missed anyone or put someone in the completely wrong position, but we have 20 players here all across a bunch of positions and five different tiers to put them in. We've got Unusable. Now, obviously, all of these Wonder Kids are good. That's why they're Wonder Kids. But these are the guys that for one reason or another, whether it be injury proneness or transfer fee, they might fall into this Unusable section. Hype's gone is for those good Wonder Kids that have missed their opportunity to really be signed now. They're playing for a big club and it's too hard to get them pretty good for your average bog standard good wonder kids worth signing best of the rest are the best of the rest basically the best of the bunch other than one which will be the goat which will be reserved for one singular player in this video but let's start with the first option that you can see here which is Pedri now there's no doubt in Pedri's talent but if you want him in football manager he is going to cost you an incredible incredible amount of money now in the hunt to find the goat wonder kid central midfielder we've got to consider there are a lot of things from price to availability, willingness to join, starting attributes, potential. But for me, Pedri's fee just makes him unsignable for the majority of clubs in world football, particularly for your first few seasons. So for me, he is in unusable. Next, we have Luis Gilherme, a Brazilian attacking midfielder. Now he's brilliant on this year's FM. The problem is he's a lot of potential, but maybe not so much current ability. Now his potential range is very high and his transfer fee is very low, but I I just don't think the way that he starts off attribute wise gives him a good enough chance of actually reaching that potential. I don't think many people would use him because of it and would be put off by his attributes. So I'm just going to put him in the very good section. I imagine in the next couple of football managers, he'll get a potential range increase or at least a current ability increase because a lot of people have said that whilst Endrick is amazing, Louis Gohame is not far away from his level. So I'm going to put him in the pretty good section. Next, we have João Veloso of Benfica and another very very good cheap wonder kid midfielder that doesn't have great starting attributes right from the off but he is very young and if anything he's got better starting attributes than Gilherme. I think I'm just going to put him slightly higher. Next we have former Man City prospect and now Southampton player Romeo Lavia. Now you can sign him in football manager it's not completely out the realms of possibility and whilst he isn't a high fee like Pedri's it's still 30 40 million pounds in your first few seasons for a player who realistically doesn't have the attributes to warrant that kind of transfer fee. And for me, because he's made his move into a Premier League club, he's going to be there for a few years. And at that point, I think the hype's probably gone around him and there might be better options. I'm not totally ruling him out. He clearly has a lot of talent. But for me, he is going in the hype's gone section. Now, I'm going to leave a certain few until the end because I think that will really heat up the competition. So I am going to skip past one here and go on to Julen Jean Guerrero of Real Madrid. Now, he is a very good young midfielder, but much like the others, he's not too stand out. His transfer fee isn't massively high and his contract is expiring fairly soon in your save, which means that you can usually get him on a bit of a bargain price considering the player that he is. However, I'm not sure he does too much to separate himself from Veloso and Gilherme. He's probably better than both of them in terms of his starting attributes, but I think he is one year older than both. So I'm going to take that into account and just put him on a similar level to those two. Next, we've got Leeds' midfielder, Archie Gray, who has a lot of talent, but he's also very pricey. I did a wonder kid to superstar 
on him not too long ago where he turned out great. But because of his price, he's not a very viable option for most teams. Yes, he has potential, but he doesn't have that much in terms of a starting ability. So for me, he can just sit in that pretty good section. Next, we have Samuel Ricci, who is a player that I've signed in many different rebuilds. And if you want to check any of those out, you can find them on my channel linked in the description down below. We're getting very close to 14,000 subscribers on there now. So anyone that comes over and hits that button, I'll massively appreciate it. We're getting very close. And you'll also enjoy the content over there, I'm sure. We have Wonder Kid videos, a long-term series with Aberdeen going on, as well as some one-off rebuild videos. So feel free to check that out in the description. But Samuel Ricci is a very, very talented player. I believe he's at Torino now. Much like some of the others on this list, I think his price is a little bit too high. If you wait a little bit, you might be able to get a good deal on him. But for me, he's in a very similar place to Romeo Lavia. I think he has a bit more talent in terms of his ability level. That might just put him up into the pretty good section, actually. But again, he's very pricey. So I think in terms of being that must sign wonder kid, I'm going to put him in hype's gone. Better than Lavia. Next though, we've got Eduardo Camavinga, who... I would put in unusable because of his transfer fee, but a lot of the time, if you wait a few years, you might be able to get him on a loan deal or transfer listed. He's got great potential, yet Real Madrid, at least in my saves, never tend to actually use him as a regular first team player. So I'm not going to put him as far as unusable, but in terms of being that wonder kid that everyone wanted to sign from Ren back in the day, he's definitely no longer that. He's already made his big move, and for that reason, hype's gone on Eduardo Camavinga. Next, we have Cesare Casade, who... Based on my previous reasoning, you might think I'm going to put in Hypes gone because he has moved recently from Inter Milan to Chelsea. But if you wait a little bit of time with Cassidy, nearly every time he doesn't break through at Chelsea and you can get him on a pretty good deal. So whilst he might not be available for season one or two, a few years into your save, he is definitely a good option. So I'm going to put him in the pretty good section. And usually as well, his transfer fee won't be that high. I don't usually see him develop a crazy amount at Chelsea. And often I see him move on for 10, 15 million pounds which would be a great deal for that kind of player. Next, I'm going to do PSG's Warren Zaire Emery, who has one of the best potential ratings of any player in FM this year. He's absolutely fantastic, has bags of ability, and I've done a full Wonder Kid to Superstar episode on the channel if you want to check that out. But he is for sure in best of the rest. I'm not sure he quite makes GOAT because he is quite pricey being a PSG player, but he's not completely unsignable. You can go out and get him. And how long that'll be for, I don't know, because in real life, he's starting to make a breakthrough into that first team at PSG. But right now in Football Manager, he's still very much available to buy. He will cost a lot, but considering the player he can become, he's certainly worth it. So for me, best of the rest, the best defensive midfielder in this year's FM by far. Next, we have Fatty Canti. Now, I can't remember his first name, but again, it will be listed in the description. He's an Italian central midfielder with a lot of talent. But for me, there's one very similar player who is much better than him in terms of a potential signing. And whilst I do really like this guy, I don't think he's any better than some of the people will have in best of arrest. Yes, he is an option to sign. He plays for Roma and usually you can buy him for under 10 million, but I think there's better options out there. And for now, he's just another good wonder kid option. But the one that I think is similar, but far better is Fabio Moretti of Juventus. Now you might think he's a Juve player. He's impossible to sign. Actually, after a season or so, he can be a very, very good sign. And he has great attributes right from the off and can turn into an absolute gem in your midfield. He could play for the biggest teams in world football. And for that reason, I want to put him in best of the rest. But when you factor in his price point and the fact you might have to wait a little bit before you sign him, Fabio Moretti is just going to miss out on the best of the rest section. Don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying up to this point and let me know if you think I've got any of these completely wrong. We all have our own experiences in Football Manager, of course. So this is all my opinion. You guys might have had great success with some of these players. You might even be telling me, actually, I signed Pedri for £2 million in season two. If you did, fantastic. Congratulations. But for me, just unusable. He costs too much money to use, and that is the same for Jamal Musalia of Bayern Munich, who, as much as he is an undoubted talent and still has years of potential ahead of him, often you're talking 80, 90 million pounds plus if you wanted to take him off of Bayern's hands. He's a regular player in their first team, and for that reason, another one that slots into the unusable section. And whilst we're here, I guess we should cover the other two major, major players on this list. The first being Drew Bellingham. Now he's definitely had his hype gone moment. He's not that wonder kid that everyone zooms to sign as soon as your save starts. But whether I'd say unusable, I'm not too sure. He is the kind of player that you can usually get off of Dortmund, but you'll have to be managing 
managing a team with a better reputation than them. So chances are, if you're not managing Real Madrid, PSG, you're going to have to wait years before you have any chance of signing Bellingham. And for me, I'll put him in unusable, but there have been the odd occasion in saves in the past where I've been able to get him for his release clause. But I think at this stage in FM, unless you're a huge club, you don't really have a chance to play with Bellingham. Our other major player is Gavi. Now he, much like Pedri, is just one of those unsignable players because of his price point. You're going to have to wait a while if there's any chance of you getting him. And even then, it'll be circumstantial if he happens to not get enough game time or the manager gets sacked and he wants to leave. Whatever it might be, it's certainly circumstantial. And for me, he's just not the kind of player that most teams in the world can buy. Gone are the days when you could get him for his release clause of £500,000. It's going to be £50 million plus now for this kind of player. A top talent and one of the best in world football, but in FM terms, not a very usable option. Now we're moving on to some of my favourite players, the ones I've left until last in particular. Before we get onto those guys though, we have Nakai of Real Madrid, a Japanese attacking midfielder who has a lot of technical ability, but his physical attributes really let him down and in most saves he won't go on to do anything special. A lot of the time he'll leave Real Madrid on the free and you'll be able to get him that way and he is a good wonder kid. There's better options out there I think and if you can get your hands on him a few years into your save on a bargain price, for sure go for it. A player with brilliant potential and brilliant ability but I think those physical attributes do let him down and that's one of the main reasons he's just staying in the pretty good section. Now we've got Bayern Munich's Paul Wanner and it's not out of the realms of possibility for me that he might fall into that goat section. He's got great great attributes brilliant potential. If you look at a video on FM Scout called The Next Zidane, that's all about him. And he goes on to be one of the best midfielders to ever kick a football. And because of his attacking talent, I'm going to put him ahead of Zaire Emery. I know they're different players, but purely on the eye test, looking at his attributes, one is going to go above him, but not quite into that GOAT category just yet. Next, we have one of the world's most exciting football talents, Arsene Zakharian of Dynamo Moscow. Now, this young Russian is already getting international caps. He's already considered one of the best players in his nation and he's been playing very well for his side and in FM that's replicated a player with great potential because of the team he's at he also doesn't cost a completely ridiculous fee or anything like that he is a great player with bags of ability and he's got a very very serious shout of being the GOAT for me he's better than Paul Wanner but he doesn't quite make the GOAT category nothing to do with him not his fault but there's just two players that I have to rank higher than him we've got Oscar Glauk left and also Arda Gula. Let's start with Oscar Glauk, who is a player that plays for Maccabi Tel Aviv out in Israel. Now, this attacking midfielder is great for a bunch of reasons. One, he is uber talented with great ability and also brilliant potential as well. Two, he's available to sign for a lot of clubs because he's not at the world's biggest club. He's willing to leave there after a little bit of time. So that makes him a great sign in. And then you add on to the fact that he's actually super cheap and usually only costs you a couple of million pounds. He is an exceptional player to potentially be able to pick up. And because of his price point, I very much would consider putting him as the GOAT. I haven't actually decided yet between him and Arda Gula. Let me put him here for now, and then we'll talk about Arda Gula and decide. Now, Arda Gula has better attributes and better potential. He is a little bit more costly, and there are some particularly weak areas of his game, but when it comes to the things he's good at, he is one of the best I've ever seen. Like Within a few years, he can be one of the best midfielders in the world with incredible technical attributes, and uh, it's really hard to do, but because he costs a little bit more, I'm considering putting Oscar Glauk there, but I actually think I can't do it. I can't do it. No, I think Oscar Glauk has got to be the highest and the best of the rest, but just because of how good Arda Gula can become, his potential and the fact that there's a whole nation of people who really believe he is going to be the next big thing. I'm going to have to put Fenerbahce's Arda Gula as the GOAT Wonder Kid midfielder of this year's FM. Let me know what you thought of my picks here. Is there anyone you would have changed? And more importantly, let us know what you think of these kind of videos. Do you want to see another one? Do you want to see centre-backs? and full backs, and then we'll finish off with goalkeepers. If you are interested, keep hitting that like button and putting comments and letting us know so we know to continue this series. Like I say, started off strong in episode one, but episode two didn't seem to do as well. So I'm not too sure on the general feedback of it. So let me know what you think. Come check out my channel in the description now that you've finished this video, if you would like. But most of all, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.